All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Frank Chilko Devlin. Thank you, Amber, for introducing me. I'm an application engineer at Samson Rope in Ferndale, Washington. Um, the subject of today's webinar is the effect of twist on synthetic ropes. So let's start off with a quick overview of the presentation. Uh, excessive twist can be damaging to synthetic ropes. In order to prevent and control twist, it's important to know what causes this twist and what effect it can have on a synthetic line. First, we'll compare the various types of synthetic rope that may be affected. Uh, then we'll look at what happens to rope strength when it is twisted. I will show a few examples of ropes twisted to different levels. Then I'll discuss what causes twist in a synthetic line. Finally, we'll go over how to prevent twist and what can be done to mitigate the damage if a twisted line is identified. High-performance synthetic ropes have successfully replaced steel wire ropes in many industries. Vehicle winches for recreational industrial use are now commonly offered with high-performance synthetic lines. Commercial shipping vessels have been running high-performance synthetic lines now for some time. The superior handling characteristics and long service life have easily justified making the switch. Heavy lifting is another application that has been revolutionized by high-performance synthetics. In lifts of all sizes, the reduced rigging weight and ease of handling make for a safer and more controlled lift. All right, now let's take a look at various types of synthetic rope that are commonly used. Synthetic ropes come in a variety of constructions as well, but the most common are single braid, double braid, or three strand. As we can see on the left, we have a 12 strand single braid. In the middle, there's a double braid, which consists of a braided core that its protective cover braided over it. Three strand or laid ropes shown on the right are still frequently used, but they're usually made of lower modulus fibers such as nylon, polyester, or polypropylene. There are various high performance synthetic fibers that could be used to make rope as well. These fibers have strength, have high strength with very low elongation and are significantly different from common synthetic fibers such as those nylon and polyester that we mentioned before. The three most common types are aramids, LCPs, and HMPEs, which stand for high modulus polyethylene. Um, trade names for HMPEs are Spectra and Dyneema. HMPE is by far the most frequently used fiber in high performance ropes. Although it's extremely versatile, excessive twist can have a significant negative impact on the rope strength. So let's take a look at why this happens. So as we can see here, we have a 12 strand braided rope that has no significant twist. In a braided rope, there's an equal number of S and Z strands. The S strands shown here um, twist to the left, and the Z strands twist to the right. Since the twist in these strands is equal and opposite, the construction of the rope is balanced. All of the strands are sharing the load relatively equally. This also means that the, the rope is torque neutral at all loads. If a load is placed on the rope, it will not have a tendency to spin or unwind like a laid rope. When a braided rope is twisted, however, the balance of the rope is disrupted. Shown here is a 12-strand braided rope that has been twisted heavily. As you can see, some of the strands are very tight while others are loose. The loose strands are not able to contribute equally to the strength of the rope. This means that the tight strands are carrying more of the load in the rope and could potentially be overloaded. Since half of the strands in the rope are working at a reduced capacity, the overall efficiency of the rope is reduced. How much of the strength is reduced depends on the rope construction and the level of twist in the rope. So as you can see here, we have a tight strand um, and that tight strand is, is much straighter than that loose strand. You can actually see some space underneath the loose strand, um, which makes it clear that the, the loose strand in this rope isn't really contributing to anything. The reduction of strength in a rope due to excessive twist is directly related to the level of twist in the rope. In this example, a 24 millimeter diameter and steel blue was twisted to various levels and then broken on a tensile test machine. This testing was done using new rope samples with no other factors, such as abrasion, contributing to the reduced strengths. This graph shows the twist level in turns per meter on the x-axis with the percent of remaining rope strength on the y-axis. An untwisted rope starts out with 100% of its break strength. As the twi twist level increases, the strength of the rope drops off significantly. As you can see, a twist level of 5 turns per meter in this rope results in a 20% reduction in rope strength. The actual relationship between turns per meter and strength loss will vary based on the rope diameter and construction. Um, for example, a larger rope with the same level of twist per meters 
might actually have less strength um, due to the fact that the, the twist gets scaled up. So regardless of these variables, the more a braided rope is twisted, the weaker it becomes. And that's the important thing to remember. How do you identify that a rope that's been excessively twisted? Well, let's take a look. Identifying twist in a braided rope is relatively easy. Simply follow a single line of picks or crowns down the length of the rope. So we can see in this top picture, um, the picks all line up in a straight line. We can follow the blue dots. Um, and so this rope is, is clearly untwisted. Um, in a series of picks spiral around the rope, like in the second picture here, that would be moderate twist. Um, so as you can see, those, those picks or crowns start to spiral all the way around the rope. And then in the third picture, um, the picks are spiraling tightly around the rope. Some strands are visibly loose. You can see the, the clear space under some of those strands that we saw earlier in the slideshow. Um, so this, this rope has definitely been compromised in strength. Um, not all of the strands are contributing to the load, um, and it could potentially fail at significantly less than its breaking strength. So luckily, excessive twist is easy to spot out in the field as well. In this mooring example, there's an obvious twist in the rope. As you can see, the lines of picks are spiraling around the axis of the rope. This would be considered a moderately twisted rope and would surely see some level of strength loss. Um, it's important to note that if you're used to looking at a wire rope or a, a twisted synthetic rope, um, those ropes naturally look twisted due to their construction. However, a braided rope shouldn't look twisted. A braided rope should look like it has parallel crowns running down the length of the rope. Um, so if you know you're using a braided rope and it looks twisted like a wire rope, um, generally that means that there's some excessive twist in that rope. So now that we know how to spot a twisted rope, let's take a look at what causes it. There are various ways that twists can be introduced into an otherwise functional rope. Improper reeling or unreeling can put a twist in the rope before it's ever even used. Connecting a braided rope directly to a laid rope or a wire rope will cause the braided rope to twist. Since wire ropes are not torque neutral at all loads, they have a tendency to spin when being loaded. As the wire rope spins, the braided rope will be, become twisted. In these pictures, a braided synthetic rope with a braided synthetic rope pendant has been connected to a steel wire rope mainline. As you can see, the synthetic pendant has been twisted significantly, and its strength has been compromised. Um, so we can see here that we have a picture of a pendant. Um, and if you follow the crowns of that pendant, they, they twist pretty dramatically around the axis of the rope, going all the way down to the mooring. Um, and you can see that it is connected to a wire rope in this picture on the left. Um, so essentially what's happening is as that wire rope gets loaded, it's putting its, its torque from the load into the synthetic rope. And since there's no place else for that twist to go, the synthetic rope takes up the twist. Um, and this, this definitely is weakening that synthetic rope pendant. Um, so other sources of twist are, are more obvious, such as careless handling. So um, if you simply flip the eye over and twist the rope, um, it will remain twisted. It won't naturally untwist. And uh, spinning of a load. So if you're lifting something and that load's allowed to spin, you can actually twist up your rope that way as well. So now that we know what causes twist, what can we do to prevent it? So like we mentioned, reeling is a big issue. Proper reeling and unreeling are, are very important to prevent twist in a rope. Unreeling rope from the top or side of a reel, like in the picture on the upper left, is bad practice and will always cause twist in the rope. Reels should always be supported horizontally and allowed to spin freely, like in the picture on the upper right. Um, so it's important to spool the rope out correctly, otherwise you'll have a twist right from the start. Um, using a swivel to connect a messenger line to a main line or pendant will also reduce the likelihood of creating twist. It's important to check the swivels periodically to ensure that they are not damaged and they are spinning smoothly. So these swivels um, are a great tool to be used to connect your messenger lines. However, they can get rusted, they can get bent, and if the swivel is not spinning, then it's not actually helping to remove twist from the line. So it's important to inspect these swivels and replace them when needed in order to prevent twist from being put into your line. And using a braided main line with a braided pendant is a great system that will not twist when loaded. To be sure that these lines are not twisted when being handled, it's good practice to use a braided messenger line as well. So in the previous slide, we looked at putting a swivel on the messenger line. Even better is to use a braided messenger line with a swivel. Um, and that way, if you're loading say you're reeling it in on a capstan or you have a, you know, a shipyard that uses a three-strand messenger line, 
um, you can prevent them from twisting up your, your main lines and pendants by using a swivel and then a braided messenger line if possible. A uh, three-strand messenger line will twist when loaded and, and can put twist into your main lines and pendants. Um, finally, careful handling and load control, just preventing any manual twisting of the line um, will also reduce the amount of twist in your, in your main working lines. Preventing twist is usually easier than removing twist from a line. However, if a line has been twisted, it is possible to remove the twist before it gets too bad. So what you need to do is lay out as much of the twisted area as possible on a flat surface. Grab the eye and manually flip it over in the opposite direction of the twist. While doing this, it's important to milk the untwisted zone back down the length of the rope. So you want to make sure that you get that twist out at, at the eye and then continue to push that um, untwisted zone back down in the rope so you can actually see how much twist is left in the rope. Uh, and keep doing this until all the twist has been removed and the picks are once again in a straight line. Um, so once you can see those picks straight down the rope in a straight line, you know that you've gotten all the twist out of the rope. Uh, because synthetic rope has some shape memory, a line that has been twisted may be likely to twist again in the future. If twist is found in a line, it is important to look at the operation and determine what is causing twist in the first place. So if you find a twisted line, Usually that means there's some, some sort of hardware or something that's been done that caused the twist. Um, normally it, it's not going to just magically occur on its own. So it's important to get to the source of the, the issue and find out why the twist started in the first place. Um, and if the line is repeatedly becoming twisted in a certain application, uh, it may be necessary to contact the manufacturer of the rope to evaluate the circumstances. Uh, in some cases, a severely twisted rope may need to be replaced or some hardware changes may need to occur. So if a line is continually getting twisted, um, there may be some sort of persistent issue that's causing that twist and it's important to get to the bottom of that so you can get full strength out of the lines. So in summary, um, we looked at twist in lines and um, we showed how twist can reduce the strength of a line and how more twist in a line, the, the lower the strength gets. Um, fortunately, twist is relatively easy to spot um, so we looked at you know, where twist is in a line and, and how it can be identified. Um, and then we, we also looked at what happens when you do identify twist. So it's important to remove the twist um, before you keep using the line and take action to prevent the twist. Um, so that's a quick synopsis on twist in your working lines. And if you have any other questions, please contact Samson um, and we'll be able to answer your specific questions regarding twist in your application and maybe try to figure out you know, if you're seeing twist, what's causing it and what we can do to get rid of it. So with that, I'll take any questions that come up. Um, and if you feel more comfortable either emailing or calling in later with your questions, um, our contact information is listed below. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next Samson Quarterly. Thanks, Frank. It looks like we do have a couple of questions. OK, great. Um, first question is, how prevalent is this problem? Um, I think it, it can be a problem. Um, in, in field inspections, we have our field guys coming back in, and, and they do actually see, um, you know, some, some folks are really good about maintaining the twist, and some, maybe they're used to using wires, so they're not even aware that their lines are twisted. Um, and we have noticed, you know, if we, if we do a residual break on a, a line that's been twisted, um, we do see lower residual strengths on lines that have experienced heavy twist. So while it's not um, something to be really scared about, it is something to, to identify and, and take care of um, because you are not getting as much out of your line if they're twisted. Okay, and the next question is, what industry do you see it most frequently? I think most frequently it's um, commercial vessel mooring and, and um, maybe some winch lines. But I think there's a lot of potential uh, with commercial vessel mooring for twist because like we mentioned before, some some shipyards use a twisted messenger line and, and the captain has no control over that. Um, they might uh, reel up the, the messenger line on a capstan and that can put twist in the lines. So that's where you will really want to protect your lines because um, you know you may have people handling your lines that aren't educated on twist. And so it's important to um, control your lines and make sure they don't get damaged in a mooring. Excellent. Uh, I don't see any more questions, so it looks like that's it. Um, we appreciate you joining our webinar today, the first Samson Quarterly, and look forward to 
uh, sharing more information with you as uh, the year goes on. Thanks so much.